Before we look at solving complex equations, I want to do the first part of this question, which is to get the modulus of 3 minus 4i. Now, in the previous video, we looked at the modulus of a complex number. To get the modulus of 3 minus 4i, we get the square root of the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary parts. So the real part is 3, the imaginary part is minus 4. And if we get the modulus, we'll have the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared. That's the square root of 9 plus 16, or the square root of 25, which is 5. Now here is a picture of the complex number 3 minus 4i. We go to 3 on the, 3 on the real axis and minus 4 on the imaginary axis. And the distance of the complex number to the origin is 5. That's just the modulus. It's the distance of the complex number to the origin. In part 2, we have to find the real numbers p and q such that the modulus of z, or I can call this mod z, multiplied by p plus qi plus q minus pi equals 17 plus 7i. Now, what I will do is simplify all of the left-hand side into a single complex number. We've got the modulus of z worked out from part 1. It's 5. So this is going to be 5 times p plus qi. And then we have q minus pi. So if I multiply 5 in here, I get 5p plus 5qi plus q minus pi. I can drop these brackets, actually. I don't need them because we just have a plus sign, a plus 1 into this. So it doesn't change it. Now, what I do then is, well, what I could do is write this as a single complex number. But terms that don't involve i together. Now the terms that don't involve i are these terms. So I'll put them together. It's 5p plus q. And the terms that do involve i are put together. And I can factorize i out of them. So I can write it as li like this. 5q minus p times i. So that's the left hand side. And the right hand side is 17 plus 7i. Now what I've done here is written the left-hand side of this equation as a single complex number. This is all one complex number. The real part of this complex number is this part here. Everything that does not involve i, that's the real part. I'll write re here. The imaginary part is the part that involves i. I'll write im here. The imaginary part is the coefficient of i, which is 5q minus p. So when you're solving complex equations, try to get both sides, try to write both sides of the equation as a single complex number. So the left-hand side has been written as a single complex number. The right-hand side is already in the form of a single complex number, so we don't have to do anything here. The real part on the right-hand side is 17. The imaginary part is 7. The only way that two complex numbers can equal each other is if the real parts are equal and if the imaginary parts are equal. So that's what I'll do now. I'll put the real parts equal to each other. So I put 5p plus q, it's the real part on the left hand side, equal to the real part on the right hand side which is 17. And then I equate the imaginary parts. The imaginary part on the left hand side is 5q minus p. But what I will do is I'll write it as minus p plus 5q. I just want to write the p's underneath each other in this pair of simultaneous equations. The imaginary part on the right hand side is 7. So I just wrote down 5q minus p in reverse order. I wrote minus p first and 5q second. What we have here is a pair of simultaneous equations. So we just solve between them to find out what p and q are. The easiest thing to do probably is to multiply this bottom equation by 5. So we, we get minus 5p plus 25q equals 5 sevens or 35. So multiply all of this equation by 5. Why do we do that? Because if we write down the top equation and add it to it, the p terms will cancel out and we can find q. So this is just solving simultaneous linear equations. Of course, we're allowed 
to add the left hand side of this equation the top equation to the left hand side of the bottom equation and it will equal the sum of the right hand side of the top equation with the right hand side of the bottom equation that's an allowable operation when we do it the p's will cancel out we have 1q plus 25q gives 26q 17 plus 35 is 52 q is 52 divided by 26 which is 2 with q found we can find p um, so I'll use this equation here to find p we have minus p plus 5 times q q is 2 equals 7 so I plug 2 in for q so we get minus p equals 7 minus 10 is minus 3 which means that p equals 3 I just want to do a check of our solution you don't have to do this I'm just doing it as an exercise I'm going to write this down again replacing q with 2 and p with 3 we know that the mod of z is 5 so we have 5 times p which is 3 plus q which is 2 I over here we have plus q is 2 p is 3 and hopefully we, we will get 17 plus 7i so we have 5 trees are 15 plus the 2 is 17 then we have 5 times 2i is plus 10i plus 10i minus 3i is plus 7i so it does check out let z equal a plus bi where a and b are real numbers find the value of a and the value of b for which 3z minus 10i equals 2 minus 3i times z one way to do this is to isolate z make z the subject of this equation so I multiply z into this we z times 2 or 2z minus 3i by z I can write that as minus 3zi so I'm putting a line through the z to distinguish it from the number 2 bring all terms involving z to one side uh, so we have 3z minus 2z if I bring the plus 2z over bring the minus 3z over and I'm going to move terms that do not involve z to the right hand side the only term that does not involve z is minus 10i I bring that over to the right hand side it becomes plus 10i now I can factorize z out of all of this well I can actually combine these together to give 1z so we have 1z plus 3zi equals 10i if I take z out of this I get z times 1 plus 3i equals 10i so I'm trying to get z on its own so trying to isolate z so this last step involved factorizing I have to take z out of both of these terms and when I do that I'm left at 1 plus 3i so the final step now is to divide the right hand side by 1 plus 3i z is multiplied by 1 plus 3i here so I divide both sides by 1 plus 3i I get this here now we're given that z is equal to a plus bi so z is some complex number but here we have two complex numbers we have 10i divided by 1 plus 3i so what do we do well we use the methods of an earlier video to write this as a single complex number we multiply above and below by the conjugate of the denominator the conjugate of 1 plus 3i is 1 minus 3i so we have 10i times 1 minus 3i 10i times 1 is 10i 10i by minus 3i is minus 30i squared underneath we have 1 times 1 is 1 1 times minus 3i is minus 3i plus 3i by 1 is plus 3i plus 3i by minus 3i is minus 9i squared now as usual the imaginary parts cancel out that always happens when we multiply a complex number 1 plus 3i by its conjugate which is 1 minus 3i so to get the conjugate we just change the sign of the imaginary part so we change from plus to minus that's all so we get the conjugate of the denominator that means we get a real number in the denominator um, i squared is minus 1 of course so we have minus 30 by minus 1 that's plus 30 I'll write the real part first and then I'll write plus 10i second so you normally write the real part first and the imaginary part second so this is the real part because i squared is minus 1 underneath we have minus 9 times minus 1 
that's plus 9. So we have 1 plus 9 is 10. So that's the whole point of doing this. So we get a single real number in the denominator. So our fraction here becomes this here, a single real number in the denominator. So we can we can now break this down as 30 divided by 10 is 3, 10 divided by 10 is 1. So that's our answer, 3 plus i. An alternative method is to write z as a plus bi. z is some complex number, and we have to find out what a and b are. Well, we know that a is 3 and b is 1. So what I've done is I've replaced z with a plus bi. So we have 3 times z minus 10i equals 2 minus 3i times z. So there's a plus bi. And just work both sides out and compare them. The only way that two complex numbers can equal each other is if the real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. Now the left-hand side here is quite straightforward. We get 3 times a. That does not involve i. But then we're going to get i times 3b minus 10. Okay, because we have 3 times bi, well that gives us 3bi, and then we have the minus 10i, and we can factorize i out of this to get i times 3b minus 10. So what we've got is a single complex number now on the left hand side. This is the real part, and the imaginary part is here, the coefficient of i. Okay, the real part does not involve i. So I've written this left-hand side as a single complex number, and I must do the same now on the right-hand side. Now to do that, I'll have to do some multiplication. I have to multiply 2 minus 3i by a plus bi. We have 2 times a is 2a. 2 times bi is 2bi. Minus 3i times a is minus 3ai. I'll write a here. Uh, well, you could write down minus 3ia. It doesn't matter, but normally i is written at the end. Then we have minus 3i by plus bi is minus 3bi squared. Okay, the i squared term here. i squared is minus 1, of course. So we'll have minus 3b by minus 1. That gives plus 3b. Now, let's write this as a single complex number. We have 2a plus 3b constitutes the real part of the complex number on the right-hand side. It, these terms don't involve i, and we have i appearing appearing in these two terms. So I factorize i out of these two terms. So I have i times 2b minus 3a. So now I've written the right-hand side as a single complex number. The real part is made up of these two terms. Okay, the real part doesn't involve i. The imaginary part does involve i coefficient of i here. So the only way that the complex number on the left can equal the complex number on the right is if the real parts are equal. So I put 3a equal to 2a plus 3b. And the imaginary parts must equal, so 3b minus 10 must equal 2b minus 3a. So we have a pair of simultaneous equations. Two, we have two equations and two unknowns, a and b, and we can solve between them to find out what a and b are. Um, but first of all, I want to get all the A terms together and, and the B terms together. So what I can do with this top equation is bring the 2A over. We have 3A minus 2A is 1A. I'll bring the 3B over, like is minus 3B, and we'll have 0 on the right-hand side if I do that. So I've, all I've done is move these two terms over to the left-hand side to, to get 1A minus 3B, and then we'll have 0 on the right-hand side. And I'll do the same with this equation here, but I want to write down the a term first, so the a terms will be lined up in both equations. So if I bring the minus 3a over to the left, I get plus 3a. What about the b terms? If I bring the 2b over to the left, I get 3b minus 2b, that's 1b, plus 1b. Um, I'll write the constant term on the right-hand side. I bring the minus 10 over to the right-hand side, that becomes plus 10. Okay, so all I've done is rearranged this equation, brought all the a's and b's to the left-hand side, and brought the minus 10 over to the right-hand side. So a's are lined up, b's are lined up, and constant terms are lined up. Um, so now we can solve between these two equations. 
Now what I've done here is multiplied this equation by 3 in order to get a tr plus 3b here, which will cancel with this minus 3b when we add the two equations together. So if I multiply all this equation by 3, I get 3 trees are 9, get 9a, 3 times b, and 3 times 10 is 30. I write out this equation above it, and I just add the top equation onto the bottom equation. So we get 1a plus 9a is 10a, these cancel out, 0 plus 30 is 30. So a is 30 divided by 10, which is 3, so that's a. To find b then, I can use one of these equations, I'll use this top one. So I'm going to copy this equation out, replacing a with 3. So we get 3 minus 3b equals 0. So that means that minus 3b equals minus 3, which means that b is minus 3 divided by minus 3, which is 1. So a is 3 and b is 1. So the complex number z, which was a plus bi, is 3 plus 1i. So that's an alternative method which is probably more involved than the first method.